Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at the Mobile Drilling Rig, a workshop blueprint that was recommended to me in the comments section of one of my videos. So if you want to see something specific, leave a link in the comment section below and I'll eventually get around to it. So this is a giant mobile base with a big old drilling arm attached onto it, which can be deployed to mine resources wherever you need. It's a very big vehicle, coming in at roughly a 6,000 blocks, if I was to find mining. It's 6,292 blocks in total, and it does require the DLC blocks, but from what I can see, they are mainly decoration blocks that have been used. So around the outside, we've got these giant wheels carrying this big old beastie. We've got some assemblers, we've got connectors coming out of everywhere, and behind the back of the vehicle, we have got a lovely little ramp that can be deployed, although you can't really see it at this current point in time. Coming around to the opposite side, we once again have a very similar features, except this time we have got a small little connector on a bridge that can be extended out to your base if you wanted to load people onto the vehicle or if you wanted to load out a few resources. On the top of the vehicle we have a few more connectors for you to connect up some ships if you want to pull out some resources in an emergency. We've got some steps and ladders going down into the vehicle so that's one way you can get in. And then like a few of the other workshop blueprints we got a fake exhaust with a broken thruster for some added effect. So now it's time for me to take control of my character and get into this. What I've been doing is going into it via this little connection point here because you would connect this up to your base and then you could walk along because once this is extended you'd be able to just simply walk over to here. But I haven't extended it yet but anyway we have got some airlocks. This mobile base has got a lot of fancy airlocks on this so if we were to open the door up go through would have a button which we would press. It would automatically close the door, depressurize, and open the door we need to go through. And once we have left, the door will close. Now this door has also opened because there's a little hidden sensor somewhere, so if I was to come up to it, open it up, there's a sensor. If I was to go past it again, it will then close it up for me. But here we have the medical bay, we've got the DLC bed, table, armor lockers, and all that. So coming through here, open that up. Let's go around to, ooh, where do we want to go? Let's go this way. So coming down these little stairs here, we come to some more airlocks at the very end. So here's another airlock, let's open it up. Let's close that up. Wait for the airlock. And there we go. We can now go out into the rear of the ship and this is the ramp that extends down. So over here, if I bring up my HUD, we have got a few options. So pressing this button, it's going to deploy the ramp. And then out pops this other ramp to allow you to smoothly get your vehicles in and out. So now I can just run down this. It's all lovely. And back up we go. To close up, we have to press the second button. So pressing that will retract the inner ramp and then close up the outer shell. Pretty nifty little thing. We have some more connectors in here for you to connect your vehicle up to. A secondary connector here in case you want to reverse. And then we need to come back through. So opening up this door, we'll once again have to press the airlock and wait for it. And off we go. Coming through this door, which is just on the opposite side, we can peer into where we just were. We've got a few empty seats there with no buttons, some LCD screens with a few bits of information, and we have another button which we can use to control the ramps from inside. If we were to come through here, we have two more doors. Let's go through this one. So over here is where we can access the assemblers, a few refineries, hydrogen engines, and all that, but not much else. Coming back through, let's go through this door, do the airlock, and it opens up. And this will allow us to go outside, if we come all the way up to here. And this is now the outside, where we are sitting right next to the drilling arm. Let's go back inside. And all the way back through. Back in the main body, we can now go up the steps. All the way up and round. And we come to the living quarters, which contains some more DLC blocks. There are the planters. There are the tables. And yes, this is basically your little living quarters for you to do whatever. 
coming through here, we have a few more little seats, some more beds, some more lockers, and some more planters. It's a very cosy little area for you to live in, which is quite nice. There's a toilet, and there's another toilet. Some good use of the DLC blocks. But now, I believe that's all the little nitty gritty details of it. It's time to uh, drive it and use the actual drilling arm. If I can find where it is, I might be a little lost in this thing. So coming back to where we were, that's where the medical bay was. We can come down here to the uh, cockpit. The cockpit has got a lovely array of little displays telling you everything you need to know about your ship. But let's come into a third person and we have some options. Number one is some atmospheric thrusters just to help move this thing along. Once you've collected a lot of resources in this, it's going to be very heavy and will struggle going uphill. We've got the antenna, we've got the ore detector, and we've got a few other bits and bobs which we don't need to touch. So on tab number two, we have a few options. Number one and number two are for the little extending little arm over here. So extend that out and connect it up to your base. And while that's extending out, you can press number four to open up the back of the rover and extend out the ramp. So there's that. Let's now just go and put them all back together. There we go. Tab number three up for the lights, so we can just switch them on and off as we please. Tab number four, however, is where the magic happens. So pressing number one. It's going to tip up the arm and it's going to put down some little landing gear to keep it all steady. A little connector will now move across and connect itself to the drilling arm. There we go, that is now all connected and I can press number three to turn on the drills. Pressing number four will start extending it down. Here it goes. It's very slow, it's a little bit wibbly and wobbly. Do be aware that if you're not on a perfectly flat surface, you can get some unwanted results from the drill. Yeah, it's just going to keep drilling down and down and down. It won't go forever in a day. There is a point where it will just stop, but it will drill a nice long way for you to get all those deep resources. There is a little filter on it, so it will eject out all the stone that you don't need. It will just keep all the resources Although in this day and age of Space Engineers, stone is a rather useful resource to have around. But there you go, it's just pooping it all out, all the useless stuff, we only want the ice, and it'll just keep doing that. But let's now retract that up, turn off the drills, and it would, it would just keep flinging out all the stone. So the drills have nearly reversed all the way back up. I think it's pretty safe for me to press number two where it'll then unlock the landing gear. I did have to manually unlock that because I didn't want to. And it'll just go and plop itself back down. Ideally, you would have the drill head fully reversed before doing that. But for me, it doesn't really seem to affect it too much. But that is that. That is how the drill works. But now, I think it's time to go for a little ride, shall we? So, undoing the parking brake. Let's just ride around a bit. We are on ice and we are on Titan, so it is a bit of a low gravity situation here, but it handles relatively well. Stopping is fairly slow, accelerating is pretty decent because of the thrusters, turning left and right is pretty decent as well. It's a pretty solid vehicle to have around. It can get up to some pretty good speed, pressing P will then stop us, it will raise the back off the ground. Look at that, doing a wheelie. Pretty neat. Hopefully it doesn't break here. Great. Now I can just do that again. Let the drill comes down. And now I want to drill this patch. So yes, now I'm drilling again. It's going to start ejecting out all the stone. If you wanted to, you could have a small truck underneath there with a bunch of collectors on it and collect up all the stone. Or you could just simply turn it off and let the vehicle collect up all the stone. That is basically it. Let's just extend everything out, so extending out the ramp. The ramp is now opening up. I was a little worried there that it was going to spontaneously explode, but the ramp is now going out. 
So now we're fully extended out, we got that now continuously drilling, but fixed in place by a landing gear. The base is now set up, and we can go do something else while it's clutching up all that stone and just pooping it out everywhere. So this is the mobile drilling rig, which can also double as a mobile base if you need it. It's survival friendly, doesn't use any kind of mods. It does use the DLC blocks for some decorations, but you could easily replace them with something off the workshop. It'll be in the description below if you wish to download and try it yourself, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.